guys i'm your host joy and welcome to another color grading video today we have a beautifully shot footage by joey helms the link to his channel and video is given below in the description do go and check it out if you want to download his footage and grade it for yourself uh, you just need to mention hashtag komodo challenge and you're good to go so without any further ado let's jump into this and grade this footage to get our final results since we are using a red footage we need to go to the camera raw settings and just tweak a few of those settings to get the most out of our image so we need to put the decoding quality to half res good then the decode using to clip then our color signs will be ipp2 the color space will be red white gamut rgb and finally the gamma curve will be log 3g10 well i think this will be good for now so let's move on to our next step which is creating the node tree well i know some of you are new to davinci resolve and color grading so the stuff which i am saying you might not understand well there's a good news for you guys i am going to make a color grading course just for you so that each and every one of you can easily be able to understand every single and complex color grading stuff shown by any of those big colorists out there on the internet well more on that at the end of this video now before beginning i would always like to create my node tree so that i can have a clear idea of what i am gonna do and it actually reduces your grading time because you don't have to create and label your nodes every single time you color grade your shots so here are the nodes one by one first of all we need to create our noise reduction node and keep it aside for the end as if you do your noise reduction at the very beginning your timeline will become very laggy and will make it difficult to grade your footages next we will create our exposure node then comes our color balance then we will create a node for the adjustments let's name it adjustment one then we will create two layer nodes one will be for our look and the other will be for our subject and so on after this we will create another adjustment node let's name this adjustment 2 then we will create a focus node and then create an outside node from this focus node and name it vignette and then we will have our final node which is our film grain so this is the whole node tree we will save this into our gallery for later use so to do that we need to right click over our view window and click on grab still so this will actually save the whole layout of our node tree inside of our gallery now let's change the label of this still image and name it node tree now if it is a fresh new clip without any of those nodes we can just go into our gallery right click over the still image and just click apply grade and boom the whole node tree will append over your shot and you don't have to create the node tree every single time you color grade on different shots and footages now let's start with our exposure node first of all let's make sure that the scopes are turned on for that you just need to right click over your viewer window and click on show scopes now uh, in our color wheels we just need to increase the gain and reduce the lift keeping an eye on your waveform so that the darkest part of your image doesn't cross the zero mark on the scale we will further adjust our luma curve and make the image pop out a bit you can see that i have made somewhat like a s curve you need to have a proper knowledge if you want to use the curve it will actually help you to identify what all specific changes you actually require in your image now let's look at the before and after great i love it now let's move on to our next node the color balance now to identify the true color balance issues in your image what you need to do here is that pull up the saturation and then try to manipulate your colors this way you will get a better accuracy now uh, let's go to the second tab here at the bottom and tweak the temperature settings accordingly well i'd like to park my color temperature right here and then let's reset the saturation of this image by double clicking on the saturation button uh, let's see the before and after great let's move on but before that let's turn down the image quality a bit by going into the playback 
then proxy mode then half resolution well it actually reduces the burden on your pc as this is a 6k footage but before moving on to our adjustment node and look node we first need a reference image to get a reference of what we are gonna make here is an image which is pre-graded and it looks very cinematic so now we will select this and then switch on our dual screen mode also remember to change the version to selected still images and we can see both the images side by side well first of all we need to analyze our reference image we probably have some orange yellow and the other highlights are kind of blue or cyan we also have some red colors present in the image so basically these are the three main color components of our reference image and it will go perfectly with our image which we are currently grading on so now let's select our second layer node and let's go under the color menu and select presets then select yellow well what it does is that it selects all your yellow colors present in your image well we can see it by clicking on the show highlights button we still need to tweak a bit of the settings to capture all the required yellow colors of our image so to do that you just need to go to the qualifiers tab then make some necessary tweakings okay so that looks cool now we also have the red signboard right here so for that we just need to create another layer node just press ctrl l let's name this red sign and just like the previous one let's go to the color menu then select presets then select reds and let's make some tweakings and there we go now let's turn back on the dual screen now we will try to match the reds of our current image with our reference image so to do that we just need to go to our color wheels then tweak our gamma then we will go under the curves and select the hue versus saturation curve and tweak the reds and then we will move on to the hue versus luma curves and make some necessary changes then we will go under the hue versus hue curves and also tweak some of the settings then let's go to the gain and increase this a bit well i kind of like this so let's move on to our yellow selection and change the yellows according to our reference image let's go and tweak our gain what you will see here is that i am currently looking at the vector scope and trying to match the yellow colors which we can see here in our reference image okay so that is done and it looks great now let's move on to our look node and tweak our gain color wheel again i am keeping an eye on the vector scope and trying to match the scions of my current image to the reference image to perfectly match our cyan with our reference image we need to go to the hue versus hue curve and tweak the colors just around the cyan color well if you look closely at the vector scope you will see the minor changes which i am currently making then we will go under the luma curve and make some minor tweakings as well well if you look at this image right now you will see that something or the other is missing from this image or it is not looking that much cinematic well uh, let me tell you it is because the shadows are not completely black and the highlights are not completely white well this is a very important basic concept that you must know in order to make your images look natural and less colorized so to do that we will select the adjustment to node and go under our qualifiers then increase the high soft under the luminance remember to turn on your show highlights button to see what you are actually doing now reduce the highlights portion from the luminance to select the extreme blacks of your image let's make a parallel node for the highlights as well by clicking ctrl p and then select the extreme highlights under the luminance in the same manner as we did before once it is done just crank down the saturation and here we go just look at the before and after great just look at that the shadows are now looking very natural let's do the same for the highlights let's see the before and after for this wonderful just notice the lights up here just remember that the illumination point of a highlight should be desaturated but not in all cases only in those cases where you want the image to look natural 
Now let's move on to our next node which is the focus. To make our subject in focus we need to go into our power window and create a circle around our subject. Let's increase the softness and then let's go into our tracker and track the power window. Now let's go under the color wheel and increase the gamma and gain a bit. Now once it's done let's go into our next node which is the vignette and since we have created an outside node from the focus node itself so the vignette node will only affect whatever is outside the power node which we created in the focus node. Now uh, let's decrease the brightness a bit by using our curves. Let's see the before and after. Okay, that looks fine. Now before moving on to our final node, the flim grain, I think the look node here, it is looking a bit too much harsh on our image. So uh, let's select the node and go under the key window and reduce the key output value. So that looks fine to me. Now let's go under the final node which is the flim grain. To add flim grain you just need to click on the open FX button right here. Then type in flim grain and then just drag and drop it over the node. Now under the settings we will change the flim grain preset to 65mm 400T and increase the grain size. Let's zoom our image a bit to clearly see what is happening. Okay so that looks cool. Now as we are at the end we will now proceed with our noise reduction node. So to do that let's select our first node. Then let's go under the motion effects tab which you can access by clicking on this button. Under this temporal NR just select the frames to 3. Then increase the temporal threshold. And finally just unlink the luma and chroma under the spatial threshold and increase it accordingly. Now let's see the before and after. Well can you see this? We are reducing a lot of noise from this image. Now once we are done with our color grading, remember to share your computer screen with your phone and check whether it looks good on your phone screen as well. Well you don't have to necessarily do it if you have a color accurate monitor. It is just a simple trick to get accurate colors from your grade if you can't afford to buy one. You can share your computer screen on your phone with the help of Chrome Remote Desktop. Links to that will also be given below in the description so do check it out. Now after some tweaking which I have made after seeing this on my phone screen the final grade kind of looks like this. Hope you guys got to learn something new from this video. If you really did then don't forget to leave a thumbs up. Now as I said in the beginning of this video that I am going to start creating a color grading course just for you guys so that you can easily color grade your footages and make it look awesome. For that I have already started making tutorial videos and I am currently working on module 1. Here are the course module and its contents. Let me tell you this will be a dynamic course where I will keep on adding new videos to this course whenever I get to learn something new. So that way you don't have to rely on those old color grading techniques and tutorials taught by other colorists. So if you're interested in joining my course at a very very low cost compared to the other color grading course out there on the internet then send me a message via my Facebook page whose link will be given below in the description. So thank you for watching hope you enjoyed this video and got to learn something new. I will keep coming back with new videos like this on my YouTube channel so make sure you hit that subscribe button and press that bell icon to never miss an update.